Sorry guys, it's been a while since I posted an update about my homemade 3D printer. I faced many issues at the end and I got scared away a little bit on other projects. The moment before I stopped was a complete mess, as you can see in this print attempt. Well, the result reflects the poor build quality. It is even surprising that it could print something. That is why I decided to adjust few things before I can go any farther. The following points need to be rectified. First, the bed needs to be more stable and well leveled. Second, I think the Z-axis needs to be redesigned to be more smaller and lighter. Thirdly, is uh, to be able to interface the hardware with common available CNC softwares like print run and also to be compatible with most G codes generated by available slicing softwares like Cura and Replicator. The fourth point is the filament extruder. It needs to be rebuilt with more control of the extrusions and retractions, better, better temperature control and probably a smaller nozzle diameter. This sounds like rebuilding the whole thing all over again, but I think it's better adjusting now than ending with a non-operational piece of junk. I found these drawer sliders that could work great as X and Y axis, so I used two for each axis with few modifications. I cut the inside slider off about half the length then attach them to a piece of plexiglass I previously had. And now I connected them to the chassis. And put them back together. Finally, I attached the driving belt to the plexiglass. Then the same way I did the second axis. Now it's time to review the hardware parts. After few searching in the internet, I found about the RAMS, which is an open source shield for Arduino Mega for 3D printers. It's not easy for me to get one here where I live, so I decided to make one myself. Well, sort of. Based on the pins layout of the RAMS schematics, the stepper motor are controlled with three wires. The enable wire to enable or disable the motor, the direction wire which control the motor rotation direction, and the steps wire to control or drive the motor. So far I was using the ULN 2003A IC to control the motors, which require sending pulses to the motor coils directly from the Arduino. I found out the ULN 2003A can be drived with the L297 IC and can be controlled with three pins similar to the RAMP stepper motor driver. And so I made a simple schematic based on that to control only three stepper motors excluding the one for the extruder as I wasn't sure if it will work. Then I made a shield that matches the Arduino pins layout that it used by the, the RAMPs. 
and then it was time to start making some PCBs. So far I've been using the UV exposure method, which takes quite some time. So I said to myself, wait, why not use the printer as it is now, like a CNC machine to trace its own PCB. And so that's what I did. It came out quite nicely. This is the shield PCB after it has been etched. It doesn't have any component really, only connectors to dock the stepper motor driver on top. And I added one more board for the extruder stepper motor, limit switches and relay for the heating wire. There isn't much in it really, the schematics looks like this. There is the stepper motor driver, the same as we used on the other board for the other axis. And this is the thermistor circuits for sensing the temperature of the extruder. Uh, limit switches and the circuit to control the heating wire which is composed of uh, a transistor and uh, a relay this was after I successfully interfaced my stepper motor driver board with print trend software thanks to Marlin firmware which is an open source firmware for Arduino Mega for 3D printers that works fine with RAMs the changes I had to make to the configuration file of the Marlin firmware was uh, first you need to set the baud rate to uh, 115 200 then set the motherboard to RAMs version 1.3 you can find the full supported motherboards list in the board.h file The number of extruders I set it to 1. Here I set the enable pins for each stepper motor to go high to be enabled because the L297 I used requires an active high to be activated. And then I set these to true so the stepper motors are disabled when they are not in use. Better doing so as I found that my stepper motors getting too hot with these sets to false and here you can set the axis direction if they are going to the wrong way here you can set the homing end stops to be either on the max or the min limit switch side the maximum axis position can be set here And finally, the acceleration, feed rate speed and steps per unit. This is very important and it took me some time to figure it out. The values will depend on the gearing ratio and uh, the type of stepper motors you are using. It's better to start with a small acceleration in feed rate values and then adjust on the fly using some G-code commands that Marlin software provides. I'll probably make a separate video about the calibration. If you are using different Arduino pins than the ones used by RAMs, you can set them in the pin.h configuration file. The only thing left now is to upload the sketch to the Arduino. If all goes well, you should be able to connect using most software that is supported by Marlin firmware. 
The last update I will show in this video is the new Z-axis version. I've used again the same drawer slider, why not? And I reused the threaded rod and gearings I had in the older version. And I added some bearings on each side to help smooth the rotations. Everything is held together with pieces of plexiglass. And here it is mounted on its place. I'm controlling now the different axes using the pronter face software. And now I'm home in the three axes. And this is a quick drawing test to see the, the speed and accuracy. As you can see, it's much faster than before. This is how far I am right now. I'm still struggling a little bit with the plastic filament feeder and extruder but in the meantime I'm trying to find other uses like PCB drilling or component pick and place. Here is a lapse time footage trying to engrave on a piece of foam. I forgot to mention that all schematics and files I used can be downloaded through the links in the video description. Thank you for watching and feel free to subscribe for more updates.